Back a little bit, actually, to more recently, and you're traveling around South Africa. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that was like for you? Uh, first of all, South Africa, I had no idea what I was going to get into over there. All we hear about is the political problems, the war, the crime. It was a very beautiful country. I recommend if anybody has the time to go to South Africa, to go. It was probably the best beach I'd ever been to in my life. The people were very good. Uh, the water, the food, the, everything was excellent. And our money was so strong over there, you can live like a king for nothing. Hmm. Three weeks was a, it was a nice, I call it a vacation. It was beautiful. Well, we talked a little bit about the styles, the difference in wrestlers between U.S. and uh, Japanese. You talked a little bit about the shoot fighting and, and whatnot. But um, let's talk a little bit about the South African fighters. How did they stack up against, of course, you and also in general with your experience in a ring? Um, how the styles fit together? It was all right. They watch, they learn a lot on TV by watching. They try to imitate what we have here. The Americans are still top dog. We just are. Canadian border in America, we're, we're number one. That's why Vince is where he is in America because the best wrestlers are here. Mm -hmm. uh, South Africa, they have gyms at least. They can train. They're in a little better shape. But they still just took punches and kicks and got punishment. Um, now we talked about you know, how the Japanese are very, very serious about wrestling. How were the South Africans? Oh, crazy. We did uh, three shows in Durban, which was on the west, east coast, actually, in the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. for a crowd. The first show was a crowd of probably three to 6,000 people. Wow. And when it came time to take it home, my, I was doing a tag team match, and my roommate, actually about six foot 11 from Canada, came running out, and I fed him, one of the guys, for a power, for, actually, it was a choke slam. And next thing we know, the ring was bombarded with chairs, just throwing them at us, bottles, chairs, and they wow. had huge, it must have been at least 10 foot barricades around the fence, they tore those down. So as we're running out, my t actual tag team partner had to hide under the ring. He got hit with a bottle, some split him open, he couldn't go anywhere. Wow. The, uh, the timekeeper, and I don't know how long the cameraman stayed. I do have some footage, yeah. but I have to get it converted. They have uh -huh. a different VHF system than we have. Sure. We were in the locker room for two, two and a half hours waiting for extra police to come in, the riot patrol, because they were trying to break the windows to get to us. They hated us that bad. Wow. They, it was crazy. As long as I didn't get shot or stabbed, I didn't care about anything else. The chair doesn't bother me. Hmm. But we had some bumps and bruises. Sure, sure. Obviously, the tables were turned in that case. Oh, yeah. 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 But now, we how still... Did, how uh, did that feel going in and, and hearing the boos and the, the you know, It doesn't cheers. bother me. It's not yeah. my country. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I had a job to do. I was told to beat on them, and I did. They just took it a little too serious. And they got a beating, though. Wow. But uh, I don't hold that against the people. The people outside of the wrestling, outside the arena, the, the, the Indian people I met in the gym, very, very nice, very, very warm people. Um, I met a lot of people that were poverty-stricken. When you hand somebody money, they were very grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, they, the people there were, were very nice. But there is, uh, you know this crime there, you get off the airplane, right in the airport, they got submachine guns. Yeah. The mall security's got 12 gauge shotguns strapped on the back. Mm. Every bar you go to, they got security guys with guns. Doormen have guns. Everybody's got a gun over there. And I didn't see any problems. I didn't have any problems. I was just being myself and kept to myself. And, but the beach itself was very, very nice. And that's where my hotel was. That's all I cared about. <laughs> now, as, as far as your matches went, were there any outdoors or were they Yes, we did. Oh. Yep. Actually, the, the stadium we did it was a tennis arena, and that was actually outside. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we had rain the last show, the third show we did. It, it, it rained, so the ring was a little slippery, and the state of steel cage match, I mm -hmm. wasn't in myself. So it was a little slick, but the people still showed up. They still wanted to see, see the violence. Mm. Now, uh, we talked about, you know, your progression as a wrestler, and, and now you've kind of come onto your own, and you're ready to tackle anyone. Um, let's talk about... First of all, let's talk about your short-term goals as far as wrestling here regionally. Um, what are your goals? My main goal is to get as much, much work as I can, get my name out there as much as I can. Regionally, I want to wrestle for as many divisions, grab as many titles, mm -hmm. and bang out as many people as I can to get in my way. Nothing personal, but I want to be known out there, and this is a guy I take serious. And then I want to do this as a stepping stone to WWF or WCW. May they both be one right now, who knows. But I want to get up there with the top guys. I'm as big as they are. I've been in the locker rooms. Uh, I know I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of them. 
No disrespect to them, but I want to learn and I want to progress. My mm -hmm. goal is when I'm waving that belt up above the ring, they're going to know who I am. And then I like to come back and open a gym or a restaurant, settle down with a family.